Hi Year 12, I hope that you are doing well. Today's lesson is going to focus on natural and quasi experiments and in terms of our lesson goals, so we want to cover our AO1 knowledge for what are natural and quasi experiments. We want to know how they are different to other experiments such as lab and field experiments and for our evaluation we want to be able to outline the strengths and the limitations of natural and quasi experiments. And finally, in order to apply our knowledge, we're going to have a look at some of the scenario questions on page 189. So natural experiments. Lab and field experiments are both true experiments because the researcher manipulates the independent variable. However, sometimes the researcher cannot manipulate the independent variable. Sometimes it is impossible to manipulate the independent variable. For example, you cannot make people left handed or right handed. Sometimes it is unethical to manipulate the independent variable. For example, it is immoral to make people into drug addicts in order to compare them to non-addicts. Or in the case of split brain research, which we've been looking at recently, it's unethical to split people's brains just for the purpose of your research. In these cases, the researcher has to observe changes in a naturally occurring independent variable. For example, find people who are already left-handed or who are already drug addicts, then make comparisons. So we can see that a natural experiment, it's an experiment with a naturally occurring independent variable. If we contrast natural experiments to field experiments, you have to beware because it's very easy to think, OK, a natural experiment must take place in a natural environment. But this is not, not, not the case. So please, please, please do not think natural experiment, natural environment. The natural and natural experiment refers to the independent variable and not the setting. An experiment in a naturalistic setting or environment is a field experiment. So literally just think if we're talking about the setting, we're talking about the field. Yeah, think about a garden, think about a haze, a haze field. That's to do with the setting and not the independent variable. So just to further clarify, an experiment with a naturally occurring independent variable, which is not manipulated by the researcher, is a natural experiment. And an experiment with a naturalistic setting or environment that is a field experiment. For quasi experiments or quasi, <laughs> depends on how you want to pronounce it, as long as you spell it correctly. So quasi experiments are a type of natural experiment. So you can might you might want to think of natural experiments as the umbrella term, and quasi comes underneath it. Quasi experiments contain a naturally occurring independent variable. However, in a quasi experiment. The naturally occurring independent variable is a difference between people that already exist, for example, gender and age. So it's not even a case of um, whether they've got, uh, um, whether they're, what's the word, left handed or right handed, because some may argue that actually you can train yourself to bec become left handed or right handed. This is something that they are born with and no one has had the, the chance to manipulate. It's not a case of whether they're a drug addict or they're not a drug addict, because again, those that particular quality is an environmental choice, but you don't have an environmental choice, quote unquote, in terms of what you are born with, in terms of your gender and your age. In this type of experiment, the researcher examines the effect of this variable on their dependent variable. So very quickly, to evaluate natural and quasi experiments, we'll have a look at the strengths first. The first strength of natural and quasi experiments is that both are high in ecological validity. Due to the lack of involvement of the researcher, variables are naturally occurring, so findings can be easily generalised to other real life settings, resulting in high external validity and also mundane realism. And there's high ethical approval. The biggest advantage of a natural experiment is that you get to do it in the first place. It's the only way of studying the effects of independent variables that would normally be unethical or impossible to manipulate as a researcher. So good examples would be researchers who investigate feral children or, like we said earlier, split brain research. It would be high, highly unethical if you say to a parent, I'm just going to borrow your child and put them um, in, a, in a zoo and let them live with lions and I want to see how they develop. That's that's terrible. But if it's something that has naturally occurred, then by all means, you can 
conduct research following informed consent and all of that. On to the limitations. There are, you can't establish any cause and effect. There's no causal relationship in a natural or a quasi experiment because the independent variable has not been manipulated. And actually that is the hallmark, that is the quality of an experiment. The whole idea of an experiment is that the researcher manipulates the IV in order to see its effects on the dependent variable. But in both natural and quasi experiments, that is not happening. Also, natural and quasi experiments are low in internal validity. As you are not manipulating the independent variable, you must study the conditions of the independent variable as and where you find them. This lowers internal validity immensely and makes it very hard to draw confident conclusions about cause and effect. So you can only make tentative conclusions. And I want you to actually quickly Google what that word tentative means. I'm not going to tell you, but Google what it means. And think if it's in opposition to the word confidence. And an example for low internal validity would be, again, the split brain research that we looked at by Sperry and Gazaniga. We argue that perhaps is low in internal validity because Sperry could not say to all of his 11 patients, I want all of you to have your brains split or commiserated at this particular time point. They all had their brain split at different time points. It was all done by different surgeons. And this is what we mean by saying that you you don't manipulate the independent variable. You're literally stuck with it as and where you find them. So this point here, as and where you find them. There's a lack of control. So natural experiments have no control over other extraneous variables, which could affect the dependent variable, and also over confounding variables, which definitely affect the dependent variable. So again, it has low internal validity for these reasons. It's not replicable. So due to the researcher's lack of control in terms of not, not manipulating the independent variable, not even being able to control for certain things happening at a particular time, for all participants experiencing the same level of the independent variable, because these things are not happening, we, we, we find it difficult as psychologists to establish reliability, which is when you repeat a study over and over again to obtain the same findings. You can't really do that with a natural or quasi-experiment. And for this reason, we would say that it's, it lacks reliability and therefore it may not be considered scientific. So for all these reasons above, some people don't regard natural experiments as proper experiments at all. They call them quasi-experiments. And quasi means almost. So they are almost experiments, but not quite. And this is what we have in terms of contesting um, whether psychology is a science, because there are a lot of experiments which fall under the category of natural quasi experiments. To make it more confusing, there are some complex studies which mix natural experiments with other experimental methods, such as lab, field, natural and so on. So, for example, in Banjiro's Bobo doll study, he manipulates some independent variables, such as the behaviour of the model. So, remember, the model was the male or female who was either hitting the Bobo doll or playing gently with it, but also observes changes in naturally occurring independent variables, like the sex of the children. So, it's partly a lab experiment because it took place in a very controlled, contrived setting. It wasn't, it didn't take place um, in, in, a, in a field environment, so in, a, in the most natural setting. However, it's partly a natural experiment because of the fact that they were interested in gender differences. And gender differences is not something that the researcher can manipulate themselves. They did not assign genders to the children involved. Those were naturally occurring. So have a think and see whether you can think of any study in psychology that has used mixed experimental methods. And also consider what might be the benefits of using a mixed methods approach. Well, just thinking about Bandura's Bobo doll study, one strength of um, conducting a lab-like experiment is that you, you are able to establish cause and effect, which is high in internal validity. And then one strength of the of conducting a, a natural experiment in the sense that he did not assign the sex to each child is that he remains ethical um, and perhaps is more applicable to the, the genders that he's involved in his study. 
So at this point, I want you to have a look at page 189, where you will find three evaluation paragraphs, and they are titled No Manipulation of the Independent Variable, Random Allocation, Unique Characteristics of Parents. And I want you to take eight minutes to summarise these um, AO3 evaluation points as part of your notes, and it should take you about eight minutes, keeping in mind the time and that you have in total for our lesson. I'm going to quickly show you the textbook page that I am asking you to have a look at. So this is it, page 189. And you can see the three evaluation points here. You may also want to consider having a look at the comparison of different types of experiments, but this comparison is not really exhaustive. OK, so back to the PowerPoint. Now, for our Apply Your Knowledge objective, we want to have a go at applying our knowledge to three of the Apply Your Knowledge questions on page 189. And we're going to do um, one together, which is number two. But I'm going to quickly again show you where you can find the Apply Your Knowledge questions. They are here. There are six in total, and I want you to just select three. So you might say, I'm going to do one, five, and six. It's up to you. There's no real <laughs> reason. For those of you who might struggle with doing the question, so because they have a broken down um, version in terms of you have to identify the IV, DV, and so on, for those of you who perhaps are um, still catching up with work and you need a lighter task, and this is a small minority of you, might I add, have a go at, in your research methods workbook on page 30, you can simply fill out this page at the bottom where you've got natural versus crazy experiments. And then you've got the apply your knowledge section here where you simply just have to identify the type of experiment and write a justification. This is only for those who are being slow and the rest of you I'm expecting you to select at least three apply your knowledge questions and do as. So let's have a go at number two of the apply your knowledge questions together. It says, children take part in a trial to compare the success of a new maths programme. The children are placed in one of two groups, a group receiving the new maths programme or a group receiving the traditional one and are taught in these groups for a term. And the questions that we have to address are, what is the independent variable and the dependent variable? What type of experiment is it? And explain. Would it have high or low validity? So let's have a go at this together. Let me check that my pen is not working. OK, so in this study, the independent variable is the thing that is being changed. And the thing that is being changed is the mass program that the children receive. So I'm going to quickly underline if my pen would work. <laughs> We're going to underline where it says receiving the new mass program or the traditional one. And that's our IV. And then the dependent variable is perhaps the outcome of the students, um, let's say their test scores in a, in a math test. We would have to create our own dependent variable. And I'll say this to you that in research methods, so many questions will not explicitly tell you you need to create your own dependent variable and you need to operationalize it. You just need to know that that is what is done. Yeah, never leave it for the question to tell you, oh yeah, operationalize it, just do it anyways. So in terms of our dependent variable, we know that these students are going to be taught in these groups for a term. They wanna compare the success of the new math program versus the tradi traditional one, but how are we going to operationalize success? Well, we're gonna say their test scores, out of 100, and it's a maths test, yeah? What type of experiment is it, and explain? Well, in this particular study, it's taken place in the children's school environment. So we may argue that this study is indeed a field experiment. Sorry about my handwriting. But it's a field experiment because it's taken place in their school environment and it's natural for them. You can see that it's a it's a field experiment because it's taking place in their natural environment. It's not a natural experiment because the independent variable is not naturally occurring. It's something that the researchers are manipulating themselves. 
Would it have high or low validity? Well, in this particular situation, this research would have high external validity because of the setting that it's taken place in and it would also have high internal validity because the researcher is able to establish cause and effect because they are the ones manipulating the independent variable. Okay so we've reached the end of that particular task so for this part I would like you to engage in some extension activity which is Okay, so for my students who are aiming for the top, top grade, I'm talking A star A, I would love for you to engage in this extension task, which doesn't require any submission, but instead it will further your knowledge in the topic that we are studying, which is looking at experimental methods and so on. And this piece was written by Dr. Michael Sanders from King's, Lond King's College London University, um, and it's titled, No, the Coronavirus Crisis Isn't a Cool Natural Experiment. Um, and I think that you'll find this an interesting read as there are examples of extraneous variables and confounding variables which could affect the internal validity of contemporary studies on the effect of um, COVID-19 in terms of our socio-psychological um, situations. So I've put the link there, have a read of it, and I hope that you enjoy it. If you have any questions, remember that as always, you can email me. And this is a very straightforward lesson, so I'm hoping that we can get through it nice and easy peasy um, without any issues. Have a good day, guys, and take care.